I love that because so many of us are conditioned to finish our our plates, right? We're we're yes. the clean the clean plate club. We're grown up. Our parents say, "Hey, you got to finish it." There's you know starving children. That's a really good one. Another one, you know, let's say you're about to have a pint of ice cream. Instead, put some in a bowl, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. mean you can't go back for more, but I challenge you to put some in a bowl. Um, another one I like to do is, you know, I, I try to have fruit after dinner because I have a huge sweet tooth and fruit does the trick. The key is we have to have it first, right? Like once you have it, often we're like, all right, that was great. That was satisfying. So what I do is before dinner, I put some fruit, I wash it up, I cut it up and it's ready to go after dinner. This way there is no friction after dinner. All right, Adam, today we are going to be digging into one of your favorite topics, and we do discuss it a lot on this podcast. So, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but <laughs> it truly is so vital and so important. So today we are going to be talking about building up your TFD, your tolerance for discomfort. Adam, would you like to start us off? Yes. Everything we want is on the other side of discomfort. As I often say, yeah. discomfort is our compass, right? If we do what we've always done, it's going to feel comfortable. If we do something differently, it's going to feel uncomfortable. And if we want different outcomes, if we want different results, then we have to embrace discomfort, right? We have to do what is different, hence discomfort is our compass. So the question is, how do we build up our tolerance for discomfort? That is what we're here right. for today. Right. And we should also continue that question with the context of when we don't have to face discomfort in life, because truly like there are so many ways out of discomfort today. Like it's not a thing. It's not a thing we have to tolerate really anymore, which is kind of scary, right? I think about this with my kids all the time. I feel like my weekends were comprised of going to stores and figuring out ways to entertain myself and just doing things that were annoying and not fun and just doing all these chores. Whereas I feel yes. like now I wake up on the weekend and I'm like, what can we do for fun with the kids? Like yeah. my mom was never like, my parents weren't ever like thinking of that question. And no. the reality is we diff we obviously live in a different world and we don't want to deal with those this, that discomfort anymore, right? I don't want to have to go shopping or do things like that. We can order online. We can get grocery. We could do everything we possibly want online. And the discomfort has been removed from our life. It has. And the thing is, is the only way to change in a meaningful way. And when I say meaningful, not meaningful to the world, but meaningful to us, right? The individual is to experience discomfort. Like, Meaningful change does not occur without discomfort. And so if we don't start building our tolerance for this and exposing ourselves to this discomfort, meaningful change just will not occur. It's not going to happen. It's not just going to show up on your doorstep because you door dashed it. That's not, I, I, not, not in my experience. I don't know about you, Adam. <laughs> right. And I, and I think logically we know this as parents, aunts and uncles, grandparents, whatever it might be, like we know that if we look at our kids, like we know that if we remove any and all discomfort in their life, we're setting them up for failure. We're giving, we're doing them a disservice, right? But yet for ourselves, it's like the moment we feel any discomfort, the moment we feel any frustration, we want to kind of throw our hands up in the air and say like, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Yet, yeah. like we know what we want is on the other side. So, you know, I always like to think like if there's discomfort, A, I'm going to try to be the role model and set the example for my kids. Um, but mm -hmm. B, I also know it is imperative. It is crucial. There is no way around it. Right. Right. So, okay. Today, I think it's really important because something I do see come across our inboxes sometimes is like, ah, Adam told me I was supposed to be experiencing pain. Well, I am and I hate it. Or... I don't feel like I'm suffering enough on this plan, <laughs> right? Like right. we get those emails a lot. So I think it's really important today when we're talking about developing our tolerance for this discomfort. First, let's identify points of discomfort that we can seek out and likely many of us actually do um, that don't have to do with food or fitness because 
it's different. Um, it's di- it, it is not pain. It is not suffering. That's not what we're saying. And certainly uh, we could do a whole separate podcast on pain and suffering. <laughs> so, yeah. But today, I, I think if we talk about discomforts outside of food and fitness, maybe that's going to help um, you guys listening seek it out. And then you can bring that into your experiences with food and fitness. And we'll throw out a few options there as well. So Adam, I'm going to start it off. One of my favorite moments to (laughs) self-inflict discomfort in my day is when I do go to the grocery store um, and I pick inevitably the longest checkout line, the longest or the slowest. I don't know what happens, but it just seems like, of course, this one's going to move slowest and I need to be somewhere. So in that very moment, I think, well, I can lose my cool. I can get frustrated. I can cause myself suffering (laughs) or I can just embrace this as a moment to practice being uncomfortable and being okay with it. That's one of my favorite moments. So all of you out there who still go into the grocery store, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Standing in the longest line is a great opportunity to embrace and grow your tolerance for discomfort. Adam, what have you Love got? It. And by the way, just a quick thing, like the more you have this self-imposed discomfort, the more you're able to deal with all the punches life throws at us, right? That's the mm-hmm. whole point of this. And it builds up your tolerance. So my favorite is right from the get-go, right in the morning, my instinct, my desire is to look at my phone. And mm. I've been trying lately to not do that. So instead, I get up as hokey and as cheesy as it sounds. I try. I smile. And I just <laughs> look up and I just I try to be grateful. And, you know, I just think about all that I'm grateful for. And at times it feels weird and forced. But that is uncomfortable for me. I really want to grab that phone next to me. But I don't. And I don't want to. So uh, it is uncomfortable. So that is still a work in progress for sure. And of course, the beautiful thing is with all this stuff, the more we do it, the more comfortable it gets. And just like what's easy now is once hard, what's uncomfortable now will soon be comfortable if we keep doing it. All right, I'll stop interjecting with these little quips. I can't help myself. Let's keep going with the examples. (laughs) That's the programming. It's the programming. It's very good. We need to hear it. Um, All right, my next one. (laughs) It's similar to the slow checkout line. Is a slow driving car, right? A car in front of you, obviously going under the speed limit or traffic. Why is there traffic? Why is this happening, right? It's an opportune time to be really uncomfortable and just breathe into it. And I I swear, Adam, I hear myself saying, why is this car in my way? <laughs> and I just think to myself, well, that's awful egotistical of you. Who says this is your way? <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'm just throwing this out there because these are the little conversations I truly have with myself to help me tolerate the discomfort of things not going my way. It's just uncomfortable. It's not pain. It's not. It becomes pain and it becomes suffering when I resist it. So I grow my tolerance for discomfort. Yes. And another thing, you know, I think traffic is a perfect example of reality, right? You can't Mm -hmm. change traffic. So you can either fight reality or you can love it, maybe not love it, but at least accept it. And one of my mantras is, if you can't change reality, then you might as well accept it, otherwise you're going to suffer. And like you, traffic is a big, big uh, tolerance or discomfort builder, right? Because mm-hmm. traffic for me is as well. So I'm always thinking like, all right, there's nothing I can do, you might as well embrace this, embrace the extra time with my kid or kids or wife or whatever it might be, and like that's it, nothing I can do is gonna change it. Um, another one for me is actually speaking of cars is every now and then I try to drive without music, um, or drive without making a phone call, just taking it all in, no music, no person on the phone and just enjoying the scenery. And that's uncomfortable for me. And I know for some people be like, all right, that's no big deal for me. It's uncomfortable. And because it's so easy to just, you know, get lost in music or phone conversation. I just try to enjoy the experience, the scenery. Um, and that helps me. I I think, you know, there's not many times in the day where we get to just think without background noise. And that to me, uh, is helpful, but it's also uncomfortable at times. Yeah, for sure. I do that with, I, when I run sometimes I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to leave the music behind and be uncomfortable with my thoughts. (laughs) That is hard. I have, I, so I, I do walks without music or podcasts. 
Mm -hmm. Um, To go for a run without music or a podcast, uh, that is raising the level of discomfort. Well done. Well, you should try it and report I'm going to. Maybe that will be my challenge this week. Nice. Ooh, you know what you could do as well. I don't know where everybody is located here in the Northeast. Just in case you haven't heard, we got a lot of snow and it was cold. One of the things I will do is go out without like a jacket or if I go on a run, I'll challenge myself maybe wear shorts when it's cold out, right? I know this sounds so silly, but it's like, all right, like what's really going to happen? I'm going to be uncomfortable. That's it. How long can I tolerate it? That's it. That's all it is. Very simple. Step outside to put the kids on the bus. Don't take your jacket. And right there, just going to practice being uncomfortable. Yep. Yep. What else do you have? So again, this probably sounds ridiculous, but I try to put, so I'm, I usually put like socks on right foot first. Um, okay. Put your right foot first. And, but no, I, I try to put, <laughs> so I've been trying to do my left foot first. It feels so weird, but like, I just want to change it up a little bit. Like, you know, one of the interesting things they say is like, you know, when you live in a place for a long time, time speeds up. And when you move, time feels slower because you're noticing everything again, right? You're noticing this stop sign, you're noticing that house, you're noticing the, noticing the street. And I think when you just get dressed, sometimes you just like, before you know it, you're like downstairs, you know, or, you know, wherever you are, you don't even realize how you got there. So I think changing it up in those little moments of like, putting on your sock, uh, you know, different foot first um, helps me. And it's something I try to do. Yeah. And it is uncomfortable. I mean, you have to stop and really think that through, right? Totally. It's kind of like picking up your, if you're right-handed and you brush your teeth with your right hand, uh, try doing it with your left hand yeah. and prepare for a mess. Yes. Because it, and it's uncomfortable and yes. you're not doing a good job. But yes. you know what? Like Again, that's part of it too, right? Like getting uncomfortable sometimes leads to messes. And so even there, even there, it's an opportunity to embrace and tolerate more discomfort. Um, okay. We, I don't know if we need to go on too much longer with things outside of food and fitness. So let's turn it into, okay, let's talk about tolerating discomfort when it comes to food and fitness. Now, you bring up a subject all the time when you're talking about let's work on tolerating discomfort. Your favorite place to look is inward exercise. <laughs> None of the above. Pop quiz exercise. <laughs> That's awesome. And yes, inward. Both are uncomfortable. <laughs> A plus. So exercise, right? And something I was thinking about, I was like, well, wait a minute. Okay. Yes. During exercise. And by the way, guys, there are studies out there that prove when you practice vigorous exercise and listen, you don't have to, right? Like nobody's saying, oh, well, if you don't practice vigorous exercise, you're never going to tolerate discomfort. I'm not saying that, but scientifically it's been proven that people who do practice vigorous exercise and yogis, yogis out there, um, have a higher tolerance for discomfort. It's just part of the physiological thing that occurs within us, right? And it helps our brains. But the other thing I thought about, Adam, often when we have a really great workout, and I know you experience this because you lift a lot of weights, we're uncomfortable after those workouts, right? Like the next day you get up, you may be sore, you're stiff, your body's aching. It's discomfort. But what do you do? You're like, dude, I'm feeling it today. I had the best workout. You celebrate that discomfort, right? I do. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's like a point of pride. Why are we not celebrating discomfort more? I Listen, I think it's pretty impressive I tolerate standing in a checkout line as long as I do without losing my mind, you know? So I'm going to start celebrating my discomfort more. And I think exercise is such a great place for it. Yeah. You know, I think any worthwhile day has some sort of friction in it, right? And as we talked about earlier in the video, there's so many points or parts of life that there is no friction, right? Things have tried to remove all that friction, but you have to have that self-imposed friction. And I think the best way to implement it is through exercise. And it could be as extreme as, you know, doing that extra one or two reps at the end of your set or pushing yourself for another minute if you're running, Or it could be on the other side of pushing yourself to do some exercise when you're so tempted to do nothing. So Mm -hmm. I'm definitely a recovering perfectionist and, you know, former all or nothing type person. As I always like to say, all or nothing leads to nothing every single time. Instead of all or nothing, aim for always something. And for me, it's so much easier to do all 
or nothing. So my discomfort is do something when I don't feel like it. That is so uncomfortable for me. So that's something I practice a lot is like, all right, you know what? I only have 15 minutes. Let's make the most of it. Whereas the old me would have said, all right, we'll get them tomorrow. Yeah, I love that. And by the way, I just want to say that you always identify as a recovered perfectionist or recovering perfectionist, because that means you really are practicing these things. I just, I wanted to give you a little shout out because I think it's really cool. I appreciate it. I try to preach what I practice. I think we all preach what we practice um, and we all live what we teach. And uh, yeah, I, I, I've worked on myself and I continue to work myself. We're all works in progress. For sure. Well, before we wrap up, let's, okay. So we've not talked about discomfort with food in particular, but I do think it's helpful because I do know that some clients really struggle with like figuring this out. Like, well, what, what is the difference between discomfort and feeling like pain or feeling like I'm suffering? So what are some ideas you have when it comes to like, all right, let's practice a little self-imposed discomfort when it comes to how we're working with food on this journey. Yeah, quick thing though. I think it's helpful to have a, a, a discomfort scale, right? So let's mm -hmm. say zero is putting your shoes on and 100 is running a marathon, right? Like we're talking about in the middle here, like very, very uncomfortable things. But to your point, it's not painful, right? Mm -hmm. I, like to, I like to equate discomfort to like an itch that you can't reach or an itch that you can scratch, but you wait a little bit. So examples of discomfort when it comes to food, A, planning ahead, right? It's very easy, as we talked about in a recent video, to just kind of go through your day, you're not thinking about it. Take a moment, think about what's next, right? You eat, all right, next meal or next snack, I'm gonna have that. That's uncomfortable for some people. I think that a very simple way, before you eat anything, take a deep breath, pause, check in with yourself, ask yourself, am I hungry or am I eating to change the way I feel? The whole idea is you're pausing for a little bit before you eat, right? We wanna build that, gap between that impulse to eat or that desire to eat and actually eating, right? The longer we can make that, the more time we have to check in with ourselves. So that's an easy way. Another example of imposing discomfort when you're eating, take sips of water between bites of food, right? Put your utensils down between bites of food. That feels weird. That feels forced, <laughs> right? Like I get it, right? Eventually you do it enough and it's a normal part of eating. And, you know, people who eat with me, you know, sometimes like, wow, you eat really slowly. Like, good, I've worked on that. Because if I eat quickly, I will eat a lot more yeah. and a lot more food that I don't need or want, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing, pretend you're a food critic, right? It's fun to like do this. I try to do this with my kids. Like, all right, let's, you know, what do you taste? How do you feel? What do you notice? What's the smell? Just to appreciate the food we have. Those are all things that are not all that uncomfortable, but they are certainly uncomfortable as well. You know, they're not, they're not painful, but they're uncomfortable. Right. Exactly. They're different. They're different than what you might right. normally do. I um, like to challenge people to leave like one bite behind. Can you leave just one bite of your plate behind? Cause that's pretty easy to rationalize. It's one bite. Eat it. <laughs> that, right. that, I love that because so many of us are conditioned to finish our, our plates, right? We're, we're yes. the clean, the clean plate club we're grown up our parents say hey you got to finish it there's you know starving children that's a really good one another one you know let's say you're about to have a pint of ice cream instead put some in a bowl right doesn't mm -hmm. mean you can't go back for more but i challenge you to put some in a bowl um another one i like to do is you know i i try to have fruit after dinner because i have a huge sweet tooth and fruit does the trick the key is we have to have it first right like once you have it often we're like all right that was great that was satisfying so what i do is before dinner I put some fruit, I wash it up, I cut it up, and it's ready to go after dinner. This way there is no friction after dinner. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I'm trying to think if I, ooh, another good one that I recommend, and I practice myself because often my eyes are bigger than my stomach at dinner time, Adam. Um, I will plate my food, and then I'll look at that and have a little chat with myself, <laughs> and I will put food back. And actually, I really like getting to have seconds at my dinner meal, I, it, I just, I like that. I like being able to do that. So I start with a smaller plate so I can have a small second as well. And that's uncomfortable because sometimes I just want to eat as much food as I want to eat at dinner. So that's another practice I challenge my clients to. I like that. 
So there's obviously these are just some examples, right? And hopefully this got the wheels turning of ways you can implement discomfort. You know, I always say, where is your discomfort going to be? And the more you can come up with ways to include discomfort and seek out discomfort in your day, the more results you're going to see because the more ch you're changing, right? And again, if we do what we've always done, we're going to get the same results. If we do something different, it's going to feel uncomfortable until we do it long enough. Um, and that's wonderful because, you know, it, it's very clear, right? We have a fork in the road. Do we do the comfortable thing or the uncomfortable thing? So my challenge to you, our challenge to you is seek out these opportunities for discomfort. Let us know what you're going to challenge yourself with this week. My challenge for this week is I'm going to go for a run sans headphones um, and see how it feels. Um, my other discomfort that I've been battling with is I actually pinched a nerve about, you know, uh, early in February. It's not been a fun few, uh, you know, five, six weeks already. Um, and it's like, you know, there's certain things I can't do right now. It's driving me crazy. And I'm focusing on what I can do because the old me would say, all right, you'll be recovered soon enough. Don't do anything now. You'll start fresh when you're fine. Right. But if I'm focusing on what I can do, going for walks, I just started running again so I can focus on that. I can't really lift weights right now. It's driving me nuts. Um, but that is my discomfort. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to embrace it. Awesome. Well, we'll look forward to checking back in with these come next week when we meet again. And guys, like Adam said, send us emails. Let us know what discomfort you're choosing to face this week and let us know how your tolerance is growing. All right, that's it. We'll look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Take care.